Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to phase out a connector in Power Platform. And it's very important that you keep this information available in your back pocket, because I guarantee you this situation will arise in your company. So I'm gonna first start by showing you some tips and tricks of how to identify who these people are using the Center of Excellence Toolkit. And then just in case you've got to give somebody a VIP treatment and give them an exception, well, how do you do that as well? I'll walk you through that. So stick around. There's a lot to learn. Very important from an administrative standpoint. But first, here's my intro video. So first of all, it's important to understand the why in replacing that existing connector. And there could be a few reasons for that. First and foremost, there could be a release of a new and improved version of the connector. And in this scenario, it doesn't automatically update the existing one. You have to take the manual steps for that. Or you as a company have decided that, hey, the existing one out of the box doesn't meet our requirements. We need to go and build our own custom connector. And therefore now you've got a plan on how you're gonna replace that with the new one, the custom one that you built. Also, Projects may have ended, which means now it's time to sunset that connector. So that's one other reason. And then finally, you found limitations or some risks in that connector, and therefore you need to sunset that really fast. So these are just some of the examples that I've come up with. You might also have a few more, but rest assured, there are some legitimate reasons. All right, so now that we know the why, let's focus on the how. So the first thing that you want to do is decide on a date and time and stick with it. But, but there are a few things that you have to consider before you make that decision. First thing is the cost associated with it. Remember that scenario I just talked about is if you're building a custom connector, well, how much time and money is it going to cost for that custom connector? Something that you want to keep in mind. Also configuration. You have to make power platform admin center level configuration, such as updating your DLP policy, factor that in. Also do it at an off peak time. That off peak time could be anything over a weekend or during some holiday seasons. Those are the dates and times that you want to work around with. So therefore, decide on a date and time and stick with it. Next thing is do some strategic planning. And the first thing that you want to do is send out an official communication notice. And that can be through various channels. You can either send it through email or you can post it in your teams as well. After that, have a way to keep track of the progress. So you should have a list of all those app and flow makers. What are the existing connector that you're using? What's the potential future replacement connector that you're using? And then keep track of it right here, which means people should be coming and updating that list so that we can keep track on it. You can also go ahead and build a Power BI report for some of the executive people to have their eyes on this project. And I'll give you a little tip over here. Open office hours with technical support is a great idea. Either you do it once a week or once every two weeks, keep yourself available because I guarantee you that will help speed up the progress and answer a lot of questions and doubts which these app and flow makers may have. Now I wanna switch gears now and focus purely on the technical side of that. And the first thing is utilization of the Center of Excellence Toolkit to identify who are those app and flow makers. And, and I am calling this out right now. If you haven't have the Center of Excellence Toolkit installed in your tenant, especially for a company, you wanna stop what you're doing and do that first. You should not have any Power Platform engagements without the use of the Center of Excellence Toolkit. I highly, highly recommend that. And again, this is a great scenario that you need the COE Toolkit because you will be able to identify who those app and flow makers are because you need this information first before you even send out that official email communication. So let me show you how you can find that. So here I am in my Center of Excellence Toolkit and I wanna use it to identify all those flows that are using the Twitter connector. So how do I do that? Well, let me walk you through it. So over here, you go to the flows and you can do this for the apps as well. I go to the flows, in the flows now, all the way to the right, click on edit columns. And in the other columns, click on add columns. And over there, you will see something called as flow connections. Now I'm showing you this first because this is not a default column that is added to the view. So I'm showing you how you go and first get that column. So when you select on it, the column disappears, not a problem, you just click on close, and now it showed up at the bottom of the list. And then I go and click on apply, and right now after it refreshes, if I scroll to the right, you see this new column added over here. But the next thing is you click on this drop down, select filter by, 
change the equals to contains and go ahead and type in Twitter. All right, I'm typing in Twitter. You could have whatever is your connection or the connector that you're looking for. So now that I click on apply right over here, this is giving me all the flows that I need to keep track of. And if you can see over here, it pulls it through my entire tenant, regardless of which environment it is. It's going and pulling it from all the environments. It goes and gets it from all the owners, the status of it, and then also gives me the actual flow names, which in our case is the flow IDs, the unique names. So this is how I go and get the information. From here, you can go ahead and export it to Excel. Then you can go and put it into whatever data source you want. Remember that place where you can go and actually keep track of what's going on? This is where you get that information. So now that the identification part is done, what do you do for those apps and flows that need a little bit more time? Specifically, that VIP treatment that I've talked about. Because you want to go and block everybody else, but you want to keep a few of these VIP apps and flows still running. And for that, you go ahead and use the exemption experience. Now, how this exemption experience works is basically it allows you to exempt an app or a flow from the DLP policy. So what will happen is that even though you change the policy and remove the connector, those apps and flows that still have the exemption, they will remain in that policy, but they will still work. And to best explain this, I want to go through some scenarios. So here's the scenarios and here are the experiences. So user that has a flow and is not DLP compliant and has no exemption, well, that flow will go and get disabled. However, a user triggers a flow that's not DLP compliant, however, does have this DLP exemption, well, that flow will still function. Also, just to clarify, uh, can maker save a flow that's not DLP compliant, but DLP exempt? And just to clarify, here is also the third scenario, which is can a maker save a flow that's not DLP compliant, but DLP exempt? And when I say save, it means that can you go ahead and edit and update it? And the answer to that is it doesn't matter about the exemption at that time. The DLP compliance does not block the flow's saving operation. All right, so it's very important that you understand that. It's all about the runs, the real time running. That is where the exemption experience and the DLP dictates it. It doesn't dictate it when it comes to actually you going ahead and updating the flow or making changes to it. So here's basically what the experience is all about. You have to run this PowerShell command. And in order to do that, you need to have the Power Platform module. And when you run this PowerShell command, you have these parameters that you need to know. Tenant ID, DLP policy, resource ID, and the resource type. And below is an example of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a real life scenario of how this exemption experience works. So in my example, I need to now go ahead and block the mail connector. But on the left side over here, I've got Diego's flow, which is very important, which I means I need to give him the VIP treatment, which means that once I go and make a change to that DLP policy, which means remove the mail connector, this flow better keep working. However, on the right, I have Lee. Lee's flow will go ahead and get disabled as well because Lee's flow still has the mail connector. And when I go and make a change to that DLP policy, this flow is going to get affected immediately. So now that you see these two scenarios, let me walk you through how this is going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually go and get some information directly from Diego's flow. And by the way, Diego is also a power platform admin, not a really requirement um, from the flow standpoint, but it is a requirement for the power shells that we're going to run. Uh, it's best to at least have the power platform admin role because that's the level that you need to run all those power platform module PowerShell scripts. Um, so I'm going to go click on the flow. And here from the URL, I need two things. I need the environment ID and I also need the flow name. Basically, these are IDs, but when you run the PowerShell scripts and if you go to these Microsoft docs, it actually tells you this is the environment name and this is the flow name. That's not entirely true. It is actually this entire GUID like information for the environment one and GUID like information for the flow name. This is basically the information that you need to get. After that, what you need is to go ahead and take a look at this PowerShell script. So the PowerShell script does is a couple of things and I'll walk you through this line by line. Uh, step number six or line number six is it just goes and gets the existing DLP policy that I have. I just want to see hey, what's my existing policy right now. How many do I have? I can all get this information directly from that one line command. Then I'm going to go and retrieve that existing. Are there any existing exemptions already applied? I want to go see that. It's good for me, at least from an admin standpoint, to see do I have any existing of these exemptions going on? Uh, just so I can be aware of that. All right. Then I go ahead and now take that flow name, which is basically that GUID from the URL, and I apply to this variable. That's what is right here, line number seven, uh, line number eleven. 
Uh, then I go ahead and run this step basically because not just I need the flow name, but I need the flow ID, I need the flow type, and all of that information can be grabbed using these commands. So I just go and run them together. And then once I have those commands, I can go and apply them all to this other variable. Now I have all the information that I need to run this one big command prompt, which is basically go ahead and apply that exemption policy specifically for this flow. And then once it runs, then I go ahead and see, okay, give me an update of all the exemption policy that are. So let's run this line by line, all right? So I'm just gonna highlight this line number six, and I'm just gonna run that line. And as you can see, it just told me, hey, this is all your existing policies. And it only gave me one line. In fact, it even tells me that, hey, you have only one existing policy and that policy's name is called demo policy, which is true. I only have one and we can verify that. I can actually just directly come over here as Diego, go on the Power Platform Admin Center, go on policies, click on data policies. And as you can see, that's the only one I have, demo policy, the exact same one that we got from our PowerShell command. Um, so there you go, demo policy, which is right over here, all right? Next, I wanna see, do I have any existing exemption policies already available? Uh, so I'll just highlight this line number nine, go ahead and just run that one, uh, and it comes back as blank. You see, it ran that, but nothing after it, which means I don't have any other ex exemption policies right now. Next, I'll just go ahead and run right up from 11 all the way up to 19. I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight the whole thing, and I'll go ahead and just run it. It goes and runs through the entire policy just fine, all right? So we've got all this information put together, now let me go ahead and run this final command, all right? That's the important one. It runs it, bam, it also gives me an update that hey, this exemption policy has been applied, it's all there. And just to verify, if I now go ahead and run this last one, it will go and give me that same information right over here, okay? But, but now we need to go and test this. And to do that, first of all, I'm gonna go back to both my flows over here. I'm gonna go in as Diego and we are going to now change that policy. So let's go back over here. Uh, let me just make this a little bigger. We'll select this policy. I'm gonna go and click on edit. I'll go all the way to this section right here, all right? This is where the policy is happening. And there's only one policy, which means it applies to all the environments. And right over here, if I go and click on the top right and I do a search for mail, there you go, that's the mail connector. I select it, I'm gonna go and block it, all right? I'm not even putting it in non-business, nope. It's directly going to block just to make sure I select the block and if I go and search for mail, right there you go, see it's now in the block category. So I'll click on next, I'll click on next again, yeah it's all good, everything good. Update policy. One of the things about the Power Platform is that when you make a policy change, it immediately starts affecting all the apps and flows. So let's verify that, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna come back over here and for this one, remember this is Diego, the one we applied the exception policy uh, and this is on the right, this is Lee. So now I'm gonna actually start refreshing it. You notice what happened to Lee? It immediately got disabled. But let's go and take a look at Diego's as well. I'm gonna refresh that over here. And Diego's is still active. All right, so just, just hold on. We are gonna go in over here and I'm gonna go and click on that one. Uh, in fact, we'll go and actually do an edit. And in the edit section over there, once we are in, the first thing that comes up is, hey, demo policy will restrict the use of the shared send mail. See, it applied over here. Now, if I go into Diego, I'm just gonna directly click on the pencil because it will go ahead and click on edit. We are now going in, but Diego is not seeing it. Remember, same environments, same tenant, same environments as well, but it gave Diego the exemption, the one that we ran using the PowerShell script, and it only gave it to him. So it's beautiful how this works, same environment, same policy, but even though it's the same policy, we get an exemption using that PowerShell command and we gave Diego that VIP treatment. But on the right, it immediately went ahead and blocked Lee over here. So to prove that final point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now remove that exemption and then let's see what happens to Diego, right? So I'm just gonna go one play, step back. Let's go back to our PowerShell script and I'm gonna run this last step over here, all right? Uh, I'm gonna run this one is to basically remove this exemption that we have, all right? This exemption, which is basically this one right here. Uh, so now I'm just gonna run this last line. I've highlighted that, I'm gonna go ahead and run it, all right? It ran successfully, it said code 200. 200 usually means okay, thumbs up, everything is good. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clear this once again, all right, so we don't have any confusions. Um, and then let me also just do another get to see, hey, do I have any exemptions right now? And I am gonna run it, and it's blank, so nothing like that. So now let's go see what happened to Diego's flow here, right? So I'm here now, remember, Diego's flow does not have an exemption anymore. Remember, we cleared that. So now, if I go back one more step over here, I'm gonna refresh it, all right? Let's see what happens. See, it immediately got activity suspended. Here now, if I click on the pencil for the edit button, when I go inside, 
the floor checker information comes up. When I click on it, bang it right over there, it's telling me that the policy is blight. Isn't this awesome? This is how you give that VIP treatments, that little trick that you need to have available in your back pocket. So now do you know why I told you want to bookmark this video? Because I guarantee you, you are going to run into this scenario and I've now walked you through all the things that you need to do the full process. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. Go ahead and get some ideas from this and I highly recommend that you at least have that COE toolkit built and ready in your environment for situations like this. And as always, keep using the Power Platform. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.